Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our sit-ups, our spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. I'm Tony Brooke Brown, coming with our message and our word today for our sit-ups, for our spiritual workout. I'm going to tell you in advance, the neighbors are doing some yard work with some saws and I don't know what. Um, but I would be all day not able to do this if I waited for that to stop. So whatever noise you hear in the background, I ask you to forgive me first um, in the beginning of this. But just hear the word. Hear the word. Amen. And so um, I want to remind you about our morning prayer uh, that is a part of this because uh, this is spiritual impact training using prayer and scripture. The information is under the YouTube channel, uh, underneath the YouTube video. So I pray that if you desire to be a part of that morning prayer Monday through Friday, that you will indeed join us. Also, there is an e-booklet that may be helpful to you to get a spiritual regimen together for your spiritual workouts, for your spiritual fitness, for your spiritual exercises. And that link is underneath this YouTube video as well. So I want to come today with this word, right? And I want to talk about actually um, with God. I'm talking about with God. What do I mean with God? Well, there, uh, there are some things that, you know, I've been considering um, and just looking at the church as a whole, looking at myself, looking at um, believers and what it is that God desires and requires of us, right? And so um, I think about things that, that we do. We do it in Jesus name. We do it um, in the name of the church. We do it in the name of, you know, uh, God. And we say, well, you know, um, I'm serving God by doing this. And, you know, and God told me to do that. And, you know, I feel like this is what God would want us to do. And I believe this is what God is showing us to do. And I want us to do a little self-examination today. I don't think I'm going to be going to a whole lot of verses of scripture, but please write down the verses that I'm going to so you can go back and go through them and meditate on them and get your spiritual exercise in and what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. And so what I want to talk about today is what we're doing with God. And when I say that, um, actually, maybe we should start off talking about this word with. And when you think about with you, you if you're with someone, right, um, you're together. You know, if you're with someone in the house, you're both in the house. If you're going someplace with someone, you may ride together in the same vehicle. You may uh, meet there together, but you nonetheless are together. If you say, I'm going to dinner with. Right. If I say I'm going to dinner with my husband, then my husband and I are going to eat together. If I say I'm doing a project with my husband, then we are both working on it together. And so if I say that, you know, um, I'm, I'm uh, doing some, um, you know, some some work on the house with my husband, that means that both of us are involved in the work being done. And prayerfully, both of us are involved in the planning of what it is that we want done and what we are doing and how we are going to do it. So it is a team effort. It is a joint effort. It is us together with God. I mean, with, with uh, the person that we say we're with. So in this case, it would be me and my husband that we're planning together. We're doing together. We're working together. We're meeting together. We're eating together. Whatever it is that we say we are doing with the other, we are actually in agreement with, and we are coming together and both of us are a part of whatever that is. So now that we have some understanding, I know we already understood what with means, but do we really understand what with means? It means on one accord. So let's look at Amos chapter 3. Amos chapter 3. And again, please write down these verses of scripture, right? Let's hold on a second. Amos 3. <laughs> mm. So I should have already had this up, but I don't. And so I know what it says, but I want to make sure that I say every word exactly the way it is. Um, and this is where I want to just start us off today. Um, it's in verse 3, which reads, it's Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? And then... Um, when we think about that, when we think about um, some of the other versions of this, is with, with will two people walk together unless they have agreed to do so? Um, let's see, what other version? Let me see. Um, 
NIV is where it says, do two walk together unless they have agreed to do so. NLT, the New Living Translation says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the, def on the direction? And so now this is the one that I like is that you have to be in agreement with someone to walk with them, to be with them. Because you have to go in the same direction. You have to have the same mind. You have to have the same thoughts. You have to have the same goal. And so now we're looking at something different. When you think about going to church and you think about ministries and you think about how you use your gift and you think about those you connect with and the, the activities, the, the works, when you think about the things that you say and that those around you say, we're doing this for God, this is God's work, this is God's service, um, even if you're not saying it out loud, I'm, I'm saying internally you're thinking, I'm doing this for the Lord. Are you doing it with God? And now let's think about what with means here. Let's think about going in the same direction. Did he really tell you to do that? How did he tell you to do that? Which way did he tell you to do that? Who did he tell you to do that with? Because if you're doing it with God, if you're walking with God, if you're in agreement with God, then you are co-laboring with God. That means that just like he sent Moses, right, in Exodus chapter 3, when he begins to speak to Moses, and he's talking to Moses in 3 and 4, telling him what he wants him to do, and Moses is coming up with excuses or feeling not worthy, but God is assuring him, I'm going to be there. I'm going to show them who God is. I'm going to make this happen. You know, and so again, it's about them working together. It wasn't about Moses saying, you know, I think God wants me to go deliver um, the children of Israel. So I'm, I'm going to go do that, you know, or God told me to do it. But, you know, I, this is the way I think would work best. I think it would be better if I have so-and-so and so-and-so and I, you know, go with this person and do it this way. No, it was God's plan. And then Moses was able to be a part of God's plan which means that you make a decision to come in agreement with God's plan and then you're working with him because God is the one, even when we go out and, and you're witnessing, we sow, we water, God brings the increase. So it's his plan, right? And then he tells us which part to play. And so what we want to do is we want to examine what are the things that we're doing. Did God tell me to do this? Did he tell me to do it this way? Am I doing this with God? Or am I doing this saying I'm doing it for God, as though I'm doing God some type of a favor? Um, we come up with programs and events and Zoom meetings and conferences and um, all types of groups and, and uh, 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 workshops and all types of things. But are we sure that we're doing this with God? Is it something that God said, do this, right? I'm going to be there. I'm going to make the outcome, whatever it is, whatever his desire is. It doesn't have to look good to man. It doesn't have to be something that man even understands. But are you sure this is something God is doing and we're coming alongside saying, here I am. I'm a vessel. You can use me. Or, you know, yes, I'm going to do this. Think about when he sent Jonah in the book of Jonah, right? You can read those. I think uh, yesterday's message, I told you to go read those four chapters, right? But Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and preach to them and tell them to repent or God was going to destroy them for the wickedness, right? And Jonah didn't want to go. First, he ran from God, but God brought him to a place of repentance. And then God told him the second time. And the Bible says in chapter three, when he heard the word of the Lord that second time, he went, right? But God already knew that the people would repent. So this was God's work that he told Jonah to do. Jonah didn't want to do it. Jonah tried to run from it, which is often the case that the thing that God is really telling us to do, we don't want to do it, right? Moses didn't want to go uh, to uh, the, the, the Pharaoh. He, he didn't want to do that. He didn't feel capable of doing that. He didn't feel worthy. He didn't feel like he was uh, had the ability to do that. That's when you know oftentimes that it's God telling you to do something because he's just telling you, this is my work. I'm letting you be a part of it. Are you doing things with God? Uh, uh, Jonah didn't want to go because he really didn't want the people to repent. And so he, he knows our fleshly thoughts. He, he, he's perfecting us in the midst and teaching us how to trust him, teaching us how to love, teaching us how to submit, teaching us how to be obedient. But we have to be willing to do things with God, not apart from God, and not just try to put God in the midst of it. Now look with me um, in Genesis. Genesis chapter 
5. Genesis chapter 5. Walking with God means that what God wants us to do, we're doing that. Now think about it. Think, think about some of the programs that you may have been involved in or you've seen the church doing. Is God doing that or is man doing that in his name? Because it sounds so great. It sounds so grand. It sounds so fun. It sounds so, oh, the fellowship would be great. Oh, this and that. And they come up with things and they come up with, um, you know, a scripture for it. They come up with colors for it. They come up with all types of things. But did God, did God ordain that? Did God call us to those things? Did, did God suggest it? Because, you know, man can put on a show. And just because a show is put on, just because there's a great turnout, doesn't mean that God did it. You can go to a secular concert where they are half naked, cussing, drugging, drinking, fighting, everything else. And it'll be a crowd there. That doesn't mean that God did it just because people showed up. It doesn't mean God did it because people get up the next day and talk about what a good time they had. It doesn't mean God was in it. Doesn't mean God planned it. Doesn't mean that God was a part of it. Doesn't mean God approved of it. Doesn't mean they did it, you know, uh, in line with and with God in accordance uh, to his word. It just means that man put on a great show. We can have tea parties. We can have um, fashion shows. We can have dinners. We can have all types of things. And it can look good, sound good, feel good, and it could be a great turnout. But are you doing that with God or are you doing it because you want to? You're doing it because other people are doing it. You're doing it because other people think it's a good idea. It seems like it's fun. It's a good event. And so when we look in Genesis chapter 5, verse in, first in verse 22, um, this is talking about, you know, you know, who begot, who begot, who begot, who, right? So in verse 22, it says, And Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. So Enoch walked with God. He was in agreement with God. He was walking in, in, in agreement with him. He was walking in the same direction that God would have him to walk in. He was in agreement with him. He was in right standing with him. And then Genesis 5, 24 says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not... For God took him. And so it's like he didn't just, like he didn't have uh, some sickness or illness or accident. Like he was there and then he wasn't. Like God just supernaturally took him because he was walking with God. And so then um, when you look in Genesis 6, look in the next chapter. In the next chapter, it says these, I'm sorry, <laughs> chapter 6, verse 9. Genesis 6 and 9. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Now, when the Bible talks about him finding favor, or finding grace in the sight of God, remember in chapter 6 is when God spoke and said that he was going to destroy every living thing on earth with a flood. But he was saving Noah and his family because Noah found grace in his sight. How? Because he was walking with God, right? Everybody going to church is not walking with God. Everyone that has a title and a position is not necessarily walking with God or even teaching God's word or his truth. And so we have to be careful to, to know that we have a relationship with God ourselves individually, that we are growing, changing, and progressing in the will of God, walking with him, right? And so we have to be careful that even though Noah was around all of these other people and, and the Bible tells us their thoughts were evil continually, it says in chapter 6. And God repented that he had even made man. He was sorry. He was grieved, broken hearted. But Noah still yet walked with God in the midst of a perverse generation. And so are we doing that or are we conforming? And so then we have to be real careful that we are walking with God in order to receive the benefits of walking with God. Look with me in Matthew chapter 19. Let's think about the things that we need, the things that we need in our life, the things that we're desiring, the things that we're praying for, right? If we are walking with God, if we're in agreement with God, that's how those things come to pass. Think about Matthew 19 and 26. Jesus is letting us know that the things that are impossible with man are not impossible with God because he says with God, what? 
all things are possible with God, in agreement with God, walking with God, observing what God says, what he requires, what he commands, what he demands of us. When we're walking with God, regardless of what's going on around us, what other people are saying, what they're thinking, what they're doing, what they're feeling, we are in agreement with God, steadfast and immovable, right? And so with God, all things are possible. And so we think about that, the benefits. God daily loads us up with benefits, the Bible says. He gives us new mercies every day. Um, the Bible tells us in Psalm 46 and 1, he's a very present help in trouble. Psalm 121 tells us about him being our help. The Bible tells us no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. The Bible tells us that he, will, that he cannot lie. So over and over, we see his faithfulness, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. There's benefits of being in agreement with God but we can't do what we want to do the way we want to do it we can't even have church the way we want to do it we can't do men's traditions that don't line up with the word and then try to pretend like God said to do it um there's things that you know you can see people you know come up with some great ideas right and God had nothing to do with it oftentimes. Many times it's man's ideas. People are even arguing about what color and which way and who's in charge and all these different things because it's a man program. But there can be something that God is truly desiring of, of us to do. And people will decide, well, we're not going to do that. Well, it's not going to be enough people. Or, you know, it's, you know it, 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 what if this happens? And what if that happens? And, you know, what if everybody don't get up? And what if it, it's snowing outside? Or what if, you know, this or that happens? And so those are the things that God is saying, no, press and do this. You know, press. There's things that he's telling us, go out and preach the gospel. Pray. You know, things that we don't feel like doing. Things that are unpopular, right? Those are things that often God is telling us to do, to preach the truth when people don't want to hear it, you know, to minister to people that others may not want to go to. Maybe you don't want to go there. Maybe I don't want to go there. Maybe, you know, like Ananias in the book of Acts chapter 9, when the Lord told him to go and pray for uh, Saul, who was later Paul, he, he didn't want to go. He's like, he's persecuting the church. But, but that was his assignment for the day. And you do it with the Lord because when he prayed, it was the Lord that made Saul able to see and made it like scales that fell from his eyes because the Lord said, he's a chosen vessel unto me. So it was his work. And Ananias was a vessel. He did that with the Lord, but it wasn't something he decided. It wasn't something he necessarily wanted to do. And there was nobody else on board. He didn't go and do it with somebody else. And so when we look in... Um, Oh, listen to that noise. Can you hear it? Anyways, look at Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. I just want to read this one verse, right? Micah, M-I-C-A-H, for some of you that have never been to that book. And I'm reading it from the ESV, okay? The English Standard Version, just because it's plainer English, right? I just want to read this one verse. And it says in Micah 6 and 8, he has told you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? That, that is what's required. That is what he requires of us, to do justice, to love kindness, and walk humbly with God. We are to love God with, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Everything that we do should be with God, not apart from him, not doing something we want to do and we want him to bless it. No, we're doing it with God, which means it's his plan, which means it's his order steps, the way he said to do it. Remember when God told Noah to build that ark? He told Noah what supplies to use, what size it should be, how many windows, doors, everything. And the Bible tells us Noah did everything just as God told him. He didn't come up with his own plan. So this is a time of examination. Are we doing life? Because when this talks about walking with God, Enoch, walk with God, Noah, walk with God. This is talking about us walking humbly with God, right? When we talk about walking, it's a lifestyle. And so just like we say, walking by faith, you know, it's a lifestyle. 
when we're supposed to walk in love. It's a lifestyle. When we're supposed to walk humble, when we're supposed to, you know, however the, the word of God uses the word walk, it's a lifestyle. It's how we act, how we talk, how we live, how we treat other people. And so the decisions that we make. So when this says walk humbly with God, right, this means that we are, our lifestyle is lined up with his. We're coming in agreement with his word, his will. We're coming in agreement with his commands, his instruction, his direction, which means we have to meditate on it day and night like it tells us in Joshua 1, uh, 1 and 8 or 1 and 9, 1 and 8 or 1 and 9, how it tells us in Psalm chapter 1. Why? Because how can you line up with him and walk with him if you don't know his word? And so we have to abide in Christ. We have to stay in the word, get the word on the inside of us. We have to study to show ourselves approved. We have to pray without season. Why? Because when we're praying, we're talking to God and we're listening to God. We're talking to God. We're listening to God. We're talking to God. We're listening to God. And when we do that, it's relationship. If you're walking with somebody, then you're having relationship. You can walk with somebody, you know, going somewhere. You're walking with them. You're holding hands with them. You're talking. You are uh, sharing information about yourself. They're sharing information about themselves. And you're having conversations so that you can do things together. There is power in unity. But if we're not connected to God and coming out from amongst the world being separate, then we are connected to the world and we are separate from God. And remember, with God, all things are possible. God is our healer, our protector, our provider, our peace, our joy, our strength. You know, everything we need, that's who God is. And for anything in our life to be changed, for us to be whole, for us to be healed, for us to be restored, for us to be that new creature, it's, it, it is dependent on us walking with God. And so I just want you to go find you some more verses of scripture, study this. This is your spiritual workout today is to examine every area of your life. What are the things that you're doing? Are you doing it with God? Or are you just doing it? Are you doing it with God? Or are you doing it with some people at church? Are you doing it with God? Or are you doing it because it sounds good? It looks good and it feels good. Are you doing it with God? Or did you put a little twist on it? And so now it's kind of your thing. Let's examine ourselves and see, because the things that God has purposed for us will bear fruit. The things he purposed for us will cause uh, his will to unfold and him to say what? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. So we're going to close out in prayer. Don't forget to share this with someone who may uh, need this word today. Don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell if you want notifications when I upload videos. But continue on this path of spiritual growth. This is all about growing, changing, and progressing. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we need you. We can't do anything without you. So help us, God, to be surrendered, yielded vessels to you, to walk with you and not apart. Help us not to uh, compromise your word, not to be conformed to the ways of the world, but to surrender to you, to present our body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service. Help us to walk upright before you, to serve you with gladness, to honor you with our life, to worship you in spirit and in truth, and in everything we do, let it bring glory to your name. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. God has given us two weapons in spiritual warfare, two weapons that increase our faith. And what are they? We have prayer and we have the word of God, the sword of the spirit, and we have prayer. When you put these together, it increases our faith, the shield of faith. And this is how we can stand against the wiles of the devil. Listen, these scripture confession prayer clause connect and combine the word of God and prayer. And when you confess the word of God in your prayer, you can see God moving in the spiritual. You can believe him for signs, wonders, and miracles, healing, deliverance, restoration, soul saved, and lives changed. Listen, check out the scripture confession prayer clause at christianrap.bigcartel.com. We are a Christian lifestyle brand. Go and get your scripture confession prayer clause for yourself, for your family, and for your friends. God bless you.